Ecuador, a lush South American country, rich with an abundancia, an abundance of natural resources, environments, and ethnicities. Ecuador gained its independence from Spain in 1830. Its population of 13 million people is a blend of indigenous Inca Indians, Spanish Caucasians, and Mestizos, a mix of the two races. Ecuador's terrain is a palette of coastlines, volcanic peaks, waterfalls, and cloud forest. Its land provides a wealth of resources for capitalist development. Fruit, vegetables, timber, flowers, gold. An estimated 775 million barrels of oil flows beneath the country's Amazonian jungle. But the people of Ecuador have not prospered from the affluence of their land. Although it is a democracy, Ecuador has a history of corruption and instability that exists to this day. After the discovery of oil, the government borrowed huge sums from foreign countries, building infrastructures to industrialize. The spending spree and the fluctuating price of oil left the country in poverty. Today, Ecuador has over $10 million in foreign debt. The government has slashed public services. Less than 2% of the national budget goes towards health care. Two-thirds of children drop out of school by the sixth grade. Instead, they juggle for coins at intersections and hope for a pair of shoes to shine. Childhood is the future, and we should invest in our future. So we should invest in education and health. Seventy percent of Ecuador's population lives in poverty. Men wait along inner passes, praying for a day's work. Teens jump at the chance to wash windshields. Women labor endless hours, and their children work right alongside them. I want to see change in economic things so that there is work and employment. There isn't enough employment for anyone. In my case, I look for it, and I don't find it. But Ecuador has plenty for its population. It is humans, not the land, that is betraying the Ecuadorian people. Over and over, the reason for the country's suffering is voiced. There is only one thing that is destroying the country. It's corruption. Corruption is the cancer we have in the country. Oil income has encouraged corruption. Oil companies trade as little as a few soccer balls for the right to drill through communities, making millions. Government officials are suspected of pocketing large incentives for letting it all happen. But it isn't just high-ranking, wealthy people that participate in corruption. Dishonesty is a way of survival here. Policemen allow dangerously overloaded buses to pass for a tip. Illegal cabbies make a dime despite their fake driver's licenses. Posters advertise how to get a hold of false certifications for all kinds of things. It's just easier. There is a system that protects the corruption. The system helps to make things done in a fraudulent way very easy. Corruption has entered the media as well. It exists in the media, where journalists receive money to omit news. Journalists aren't paid well, and they have to sell themselves. So obviously this foments a compromise with sources. In fact, they never denounce or do something against their sources. It reveals a type of corruption in the media. The media is part of the system and the state. Nowadays, the corruption is inside, and it is a part of everything. Under the country's constitution, Ecuadorian journalists have the right to freedom of opinion and expression of thought. But many take a non-confrontational tone because defamation is a serious criminal offense. It is easier to accept gifts from sources than to confront them. When we, when we touch the, the, the thing of the corruption, any instance of this, uh, we have a lot of barriers in front of us. I say it openly, we try to take that advantage too. Try to, to fight this war, to fight this war with uh, the same weapons. And it works, and works fine. How can we solve the problem when we ourselves are contaminated? Good question. There are not many people in the media that have success or are dedicated to investigating the corruption with investigative journalism because it isn't very convenient. Confronting dangerous groups can feel untouchable. No one can denounce them because they themselves are corrupt. In every institution, corruption is the rule.
All of the media in Ecuador is privately owned. The interests of owners affect the content of the news, and biases of the media are obvious. It's like the personal decision of the journalist to be biased or not. So I know that here in the channel where I work, there are journalists that are, that are biased. No one, no one is uh, asking us to, do, to be like that. It's your decision and no one is controlling that. No one is saying, hey, don't do this. You're doing wrong. Don't accept this, this gift, for example. You're doing wrong. Your report is too biased. There's not too much control about it. Some journalists don't consider being biased a bad trait when it brings attention to the poor of the country. In our society, there are deep inequalities, differences. There is an elite group. They hold enormous wealth. They have concentrated the banking, the industry of agriculture, of exports. They are a tiny group, and there is an enormous poor population among seven to eight million people that don't make two dollars a day. In such a situation, you cannot stay neutral and balanced. They have taken everything, the natural resources, the earnings of the bank. As a journalist, I cannot remain quiet. As a journalist, you cannot say, I'm a journalist, I have to remain neutral. I can't do it. Neutrality may or may not be the job of the media, but educating the public is its duty. The job of the media is to open what is closed, to take abstract concepts and make them popular ideas, to make them more edible so the population can understand. It is a free education where people can learn to think, criticize, exercise imagination. They can say, this economic model is crazy. There are other options. If people don't have education, how do they know the rights uh, exist? People say, oh, we need more laws to... No, people don't even know the laws we have. People don't even know the rights they have. There are many things that are really disgusting, and uh, it's because of the lack of knowledge, the lack of education. In a country where the peasants of the highlands have no concept of the ocean or the tropical climate where their fellow Ecuadorians live, simplicity is the key to education. There is a high percentage of the population that has not received an education and can't understand. But our idea is to use a simple language to reach the viewer. The importance of educating the public was never more apparent than in the last presidential elections. I don't think that in remote places they care who's the president. Because in remote places they've never sensed the presence of a president. I mean, if you go to the countryside, what they need is water. I don't know if they're worried about who gives them water. They just need the water. They have very simple needs and they do care about that. They, they do care that they can have uh, food to feed their children. In December 2006, Ecuador elected its eighth president in 10 years. The media played a role in presenting the candidates, but used to constantly having to oust corrupt presidents, the people were not terribly interested in the news coverage. Votes were easily bought. I mean, if you don't have t-shirts and someone comes and gives you t-shirts, yeah. Okay, thank you. I'll vote for you. For us Ecuadorians, we have a huge dilemma because we don't know what the two candidates are offering and who will complete these things, and which of the candidates is more educated for the position of president. Both promise many things, but they always take on things that they don't complete. With little faith in either candidate, the public voted for their next president. Who will I vote for? I guess I'll vote for Correa, because both are clowns, but he is the lesser of the two evils. 43-year-old Rafael Correa was elected to president after making many promises. The central message is that of change. The dilemma of this election is very simple. Everyone is the same. The same in Congress, the same in corruption, the same in injustice, the same in exploitation. I will change this country for the better. Throughout the campaign, Correa was known to whip his belt in the air, promising to give the lash to the corrupt elite of the country. 
Correa, often seen wearing a red scarf of the Socialist Party, prioritizes social spending over paying back the nation's debt. It's important that the press educate about the importance of, of expressing yourself, voting. Even though our politicians are bad politicians, you should vote. You should express, because that's what democracy is about. But in Ecuador, it is not a matter of if you should vote. All literate citizens between the ages of 18 and 65 are required to vote. After you have marked your ballot, you are handed a certificate that you have to have in order to receive employment or any form of aid from the government. Despite lacking balanced, in-depth reporting on political campaigns, the media was the key instrument in teaching the uneducated public how to place their ballots and receive their certification. It is in these small steps that the media in Ecuador is meeting its people's needs. What more can the media do? Many times the media concentrates on superficial things, and sometimes here in Ecuador so many things happen that we forget what occurred in the past. Follow-up to stories is definitely lacking. We, we're not solving things, we are just like shouting things in the air. And, uh, okay, I shouted, I shout this news, hey, someone is dying, uh, children in, the, in uh, the hospitals are dying because the hospitals are not hygienic. Um, next week there will be a volcano, and what happened with those children? More investigative journalism is needed, but it is very difficult to get straight facts in Ecuador. Because you need to call a lot of people, you need to know a lot of people, because you cannot really trust um, what a PR guy is telling you. It's really difficult, like a company or whatever, you have to call several sources. Even what a politician is telling you, you have to double check everything in here, triple check everything. When correct information is found, the media fails to show its importance. Our journalism is one of great declaration. We are really just telling little facts. We are missing reflection. It's just words, but little context. It is by teaching the public the importance behind facts that things can begin to change. The media has the function of informing, helping direct people's knowledge so that they can make things happen or stop them from happening. But often, journalists fail to provide the information needed for change. Journalists are paid so badly, so it's easy to enter into the corruption and try to keep the subject of it far away, especially when you have children to educate and feed. Before anything else, the media is a business. Before anything else, the purpose of a business is to make money. Whether or not the media is helping society, it has a huge influence on its public. The press is one, is one of the institutions, let's say, that have some kind of respect. I don't know if we deserve that respect, but people trust us. So what does the average Ecuadorian want the media to use their power for? For my country, only to get better. I want for people to be better off. Not in the streets, people hungry, kids working. It's the least that can be done. People walk through the city where children are working in the streets and say, everything is good in this country. There isn't that much poverty. This is all false. Those kids are in the street. The first thing is to see all this, to open the eyes and begin to be able to think. The biggest problem in my country is that there is no future for my children. Is the media in Ecuador meeting its people's needs? In slow, simple steps, educating its people, yes. In exposing the corruption that affects the country's future, it has some growing to do. The whole press thing, the whole journalism in Ecuador, it's been happy to be mediocre. See? But I think that's changing too. It's, it's, it's not going to stay like that in the next five years. It's changing. For the better, yeah. I hope so. That's it.